what should I make a video on today? I think I've got it. We are going to be talking about box squats, which means that we have to acknowledge that most people think that they suck for raw powerlifting. And that opinion is almost justifiable because if we look at the evidence of every raw lifter who has trained box squats, very few of them have gotten shit all carry over from them. And that isn't the fault of the box squat as much as it is the fault of the lifter for not understanding why the box is there, what they're trying to get out of it, and how to perform a box squat for carryover back to a raw comp squat. So we're going to go over the top three mistakes that raw lifters make with their box squats, because if we know what to avoid, we're going to be able to do them right. But first, we got to understand where the big misconception around box squats came from and what people fail to realize about almost everything that has been talked about in regards to box squats is that box squats were an exercise popularized for multiply powerlifting. So all of the articles, all of the videos, they're all talking about how you need to be ultra wide, ultra sat back, shins vertical or even past vertical. And that just isn't going to pan out for a raw lifter because we're never going to find ourselves in this shape. But this is the exact shape we need to be in to be successful with multiply. And that's why this style of box squat works so well for equipped lifters. And that brings us to the first mistake that raw lifters make when they are box squatting. They're using the wrong groove. They're treating it like a multiply style box squat. They're sitting way back, they're loading their hips, they're ultra wide, they're making their hips and hamstrings very strong by doing this, but they're forgetting that as a raw lifter, quads are important. And if you're sitting back this far in multiply, the suit and the briefs, they're gonna catch you and they're gonna give you something to push back into. But if you're raw and you take away this box, I'm gonna fall on my ass. And you see too many raw lifters that are like, west side, west side, west side, box squats, box squats, box squats, and they only train to the box and they're only training wide and they're only training way sat back. And then they wonder why their bottom end sucks come meet day. So if we're gonna be predominantly box squatting during a raw meet prep, we need to be in our raw stance, we need to be in our raw groove, and we shouldn't be doing any excessive sitting back. We should be sitting straight down to the box, loading into it, and then standing up. And yes, those ultra wide, ultra sat back box squats can be a good hip and hamstring builder for a raw lifter. But if we're doing them that way, we need to treat them as an accessory, not as the main lift. Let's say you are box squatting with your raw comp stance and you're using your raw comp groove. The next mistake that raw lifters will make with a box squat is failing to understand that the point of the box is to make the lift harder. You'll see lifters use the box as a cheat flinging themselves back and using momentum to get out out of the bottom. If we're using momentum to stand up out of the bottom, the bottom end isn't going to be getting stronger because we're using momentum to train it. So if we want to make the bottom end strong, that means that we need to make it as challenging as possible. What we're going to do is we're going to lower ourselves onto the box under control. We're going to put the brakes on with our legs. We're going to sit on the box, putting our weight down into it, but making sure that we stay tight and keep everything locked in. Once we've unloaded weight onto the box, it is going to be so freaking hard to stand up. And if you run box squats this way, it's going to make you so confident coming out of the hole on a free squat. And if you are box squatting with your comp groove and your comp stance, and when you get to the box, you're unloading into it, but you're staying tight, you're not getting loose, you're not swinging off of it with momentum, what else is there to screw up? Well, it's a big one. And that is using the box as a way to always avoid hitting depth. And don't get me wrong. I am a fan of high box squats if we are training them with the right context. And that right context is going to look like trying to train a specific point in the range of motion or trying to get someone more comfortable at bracing with more weight on their back. If we are going to be using a high box in our training, we need to make sure that we're mixing it in with enough squatting to depth so that we know that we can still hit depth and so that we know that we're still strong there. Because if you don't use it, you're going to lose it. And I hate to break it to you, but if you're always squatting high, it ain't going to be there on the day. So that about covers it. If you want to make a box squat work well for raw powerlifting, make sure you're doing them with a raw squat intent. Make sure that you aren't using the box as a way to make the squat easier. You're using the box as a way to make the squat harder. And last but not least, make sure that you're squatting the depth enough that you still know how to hit depth. Thank you guys so much for watching. Add some box squats in your training because if they are done the right way, they are going to be huge for building your squat up. And make sure you hit those links below if you need more direct 
help and be sure to check out the next upcoming lecture series on making conjugate work for a raw power thing because we're going to get into how to apply box plus to your own training in a way that's going to make sure that you don't suck on meat day.